The DEP and the West Virginia Division of Natural Resources are working together on a stream restoration project that's taking a different approach to come up with a permanent solution to an ongoing and very expensive problem. Davis Creek winds its way through the Kanawha State Forest. From its headwaters west of Hernshaw, it descends almost 600 feet over roughly nine and a half miles to its confluence with the Kanawha River at South Charleston. Along the way, it picks up sand and silt. That's what streams do, that is, until it gets here. And then there's a problem. The, the main function of streams is to carry sediment. When you put a dam or other obstruction in the stream, it catches the sediment and holds it back, which in effect starves the downstream reaches of sediment while backing up the sediment in the upstream reaches. So you're eff effectively eliminating stream habitat in doing so, uh, especially in cases like this where it's not for flood control. It's more of a net loss than a net benefit. The pond was formed in the 1930s when the Civilian Conservation Corps built a dam across Davis Creek to create a swimming area. But shortly after it was finished, water quality problems in the creek caused by the discharge from former coal camps upstream meant the pond was never used for swimming. For the past several decades, the pond has been used as a Class Q fishing area, a special regulation area for use by children and folks who use wheelchairs. But a change is coming. The Division of Natural Resources and the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection are working together to reconnect the upper and lower parts of the stream. In the initial phases of construction, what we'll start doing is dewatering the pool, whether it be by pumps or other methods. And then we'll take a notch out of the dam so that the water free flows through. Um, we will have to excavate the sediment, the silt, and everything that's behind it and control that so that we're not creating a, a muddy mess downstream. And as that dries out and we get that material out, we will rebuild the stream channel through, through this entire impoundment, reconnect it with the upstream reaches and the downstream reaches so that it's a functional stream again. Although the dam is roughly 12 feet high, the impoundment behind it is shallow, meaning there's between eight and 10 feet of muck covering the original cut stone bottom. Opening the stream back up will bring a major change and drastic improvement to the pond's ecosystem. You will have a, a stream ecosystem here rather than, rather than a, a still water pond uh, that creates a different type of fishery. Uh, typically in ponds you see you know, bass and bluegill. Uh, the, the stream ecosystem is gonna support more of a trout fishery. Crews will use a technique called natural stream channel design to recreate what this section of Davis Creek would have looked like and functioned like before the dam was built. Design work and securing the necessary permits is expected to take about a year with actual construction to take another 12 to 18 months, depending on the weather. We want it to look like the stream channel has always been there. Uh, we don't want it to look like a man-made uh, trapezoidal channel as they call it or just a, a residential ditch that goes through and there's nothing living in it. We want to put meanders, we want to put habitat structures, uh, whether they be log structures, rock structures. Uh, they use a lot of different techniques and we want it to look as natural as we can. I mean, we are in a state forest and we want to maintain that natural look. Uh, we will plant riparian areas along both sides of the stream so that we maintain shade and cover for the fish aquatic life, but we also want to leave it open enough that the visitors to the park can have access to fishing. Um, it is a fished resource and we want to maintain that. We just want to improve it. And a big part of that improvement will be the work that happens just upstream of the pond area. The impoundment itself is, is going to create about 1,200 linear feet of stream channel. Uh, then we're going to enhance an additional 4,000 or so linear feet above, above the impoundment. Uh, that should also allow for, for fisheries uh, to be utilized up there. Uh, so, so the, the fishery is going to be going to be expanded from, from this small pool area, uh, upstream, for quite a ways. You know, really they're going to end up with, with two or three times the amount of fishable area that, that they currently have, uh, with the habitat enhancement work that's going to take place. 
Stabilizing the banks upstream will also help reduce erosion and decrease the sediment load, especially during heavy rain events. This is not a flood control dam. Uh, it can't provide flood control when the fact that it's filled up with sediment. There really is no storage for water uh, in this dam. So whatever comes downstream goes over the top of it and, and continues downstream. The dam does have historical significance, which adds additional considerations to the project's design. We do look at that and we take that into account. Uh, we will work closely with the State Historic Preservation Office uh, to make sure that, that this site's preserved uh, as much as possible and, and the history is preserved. Uh, even though the dam, you know, the majority of the dam is probably going to have to be torn out, uh, you know, we will, we, there will be mitigating factors that, that we will take into account and, and make sure that the history is preserved and, and the information is here for, for everyone who visits the park to, to know what was here and what stood here at one point in time and, and why it was constructed. Funding for removing the dam, clearing the sediments, and reconnecting the stream comes from the DEP's in lieu fee program. Program manager Scott Settle explains how it works. The West Virginia Inlu Fee Program is, is funded uh, through impacts by various industries. Um, it is a mitigation option when an industry has an impact to, uh, to either a state water or a water of the U.S. Uh, they have to mitigate that impact. One of the mitigation options is to, is to pay into the Inlu Fee Program. Uh, we take that money. And, and we conduct stream and wetland projects throughout the state uh, to help mitigate some of, those, some of those losses to aquatic resources and, and aquatic function. The other part of the funding comes from an innovative idea to turn a recurring problem into a permanent solution. We have also had an additional funding come through where several years ago, the West Virginia DEP and their mining and reclamation section conditioned a nearby mining permit. Uh, they conditioned that permit that it would be issued on the condition that they would come in and dredge this pond for, to not only control the sediment, but to make it more accessible to fishermen, uh, make it a better aquatic resource. The mine operator started to dredge the pond last fall to try and improve the fishing area, but because of a wetter than normal season, frequent rainstorms would fill the pond back in with sediment as fast as it could be dredged out. After several months, the work was stopped to wait for the weather to improve. In the meantime, the DEP and DNR reevaluated the project and came up with a better plan. The DEP, the DNR, and the coal company got together and we have come to an agreement where instead of dredging the pond, they are going to help uh, give us money to further enhance the stream. Um, that way we can do things for this project that we can't do under the Inlu fee program. We can enhance the uh, fishing re access. We can put in uh, paths or uh, fishing platforms, whatever we need to do, the Inlu fee can't cover. Uh, and we may even be able to extend the bank stabilization further upstream with that money. And it is earmarked for the park to do uh, projects that will be beneficial to the park and mainly the stream. Um, so that, that's a win-win for us, uh, in our opinion, because we can do more good rather than excavating sediment out of an impoundment that will fill in again in just a couple of years. The impoundment would have to be continually, uh, continually dredged out. The, the maintenance would, like I said, would, would have to be on a regular, you know, three to five year uh, cycle. Uh, and it's expensive. It's expensive, to, it's expensive to dredge it out. It's expensive to, to move it, to truck it, to place it. Uh, this, this is a permanent solution. Once the work is finished, the DEP will monitor the channel for the next seven years to make sure the changes to the stream structure continue to work as designed. After that, the agency will provide long-term stewardship money for someone to continue monitoring the project. So it's not something that's, that's one and done and, and we leave. It's, uh, it's something that we make sure that's in place and is in place for you know, not just the environment, but the residents that utilize the, the Canal State Forest for, for a long time. And it's an example of two different state agencies coming together to develop a better solution than either could have come up with on its own. 
DNR and DEP are working together on this project in a number of ways. We're not only working with the DEP's in lieu fee program, we're also working with the folks out of the Mining and Reclamation Division. Uh, we're working with not only state parks, but also wildlife resources. So it's, it's a huge cooperation between us all to make sure we get the best product, the best work done on the ground, and get the end result is a better use inside the park for the, the visitors, for those who come to Kanawha State Forest. Um, it's, it's a well-used park, it's a beautiful park, and we want this to be a showpiece of it. Uh, it will not only be a showpiece, but also an educational tool. Uh, these uh, reconstructed stream channels are fantastic aquatic resources. Um, they promote better aquatic diversity. Uh, they have more landforms or habitat types. Uh, it's, it's, they're really amazing to watch them work.